Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, we are going to see the simulation of class of commutation using MATLAB. So this is the circuit diagram of a class of commutation circuit. It is also referred to as line commutation or natural commutation. The reason why it's called as natural commutation is very simple. Uh, since an AC supply is used uh, during positive half cycle, the thyristor will conduct. During negative half cycle, the thyristor will become reverse biased uh, as the anode current falls below uh, the threshold value that is the latching uh, uh, current for the thyristor and consequently it turns off the thyristor as a result it acts as an open circuit therefore our main objective is to turn off the thyristor since it is naturally occurring due to the uh, availability of the ac sinusoidal supply we will be able to turn off the thyristor whereas in case of all the other class uh, classes of commutation that is force commutation circuits such as class a b c d we were using an external method uh, using lnc components in order to turn off the thyristor but over here we only need an ac supply that automatically turns of the thyristor so this usually saves the cost of the circuits and uh, consequently these type of methods are generally used in rectifiers but in case of inverters and dc supplies uh, such as dc to dc converters we will be using uh, forced commutation techniques class a class b class c class d that is also simulated if, if in case you want to uh, refer to it please do refer to our videos the link will be provided in the description so over here as i already mentioned uh, during positive half cycle the voltage appears across the load and uh, the thyristor will be conducting as a result the voltage across the thyristor will be equal to zero and once uh, the negative half cycle begins the voltage across it will become equal to minus vm because it acts as open circuit so whatever is supplied will appear across these two terminals so minus vm will be appearing across these two terminals so as a result the output voltage will become equal to zero as the circuit is open there will be no voltage appearing across the load terminals so once this waveform is clearly understood we can get started off with our simulation matlab so let's go all right here we are so this is click on the simulink library process and search for power view uh, this is one of the most important blocks for the simulation to take place we need a voltage measurement block as well add that block uh, we need an AC voltage source uh, that is used as a supply in this case so search for that we will be using this AC voltage source and not this this is used for a different purpose for uh, di digital signal processing and so on this is used for converter applications so add this AC voltage source and uh, once that is done uh, we would be requiring a thyristor so search for thyristor and uh, you'll be getting it right at the bottom over here scroll a little down and add that block uh, once that is done we will be requiring a pulse generator in order to trigger the thyristor so search for pulse you will be getting it right at the top so add that block as well uh, we will be requiring a series rlc branch uh, later on we can modify it to be a resistive load so that can be used as a load and uh, we would be requiring a scope in order to check how the waveforms looks like so search for scope and add that block as well so i'll be placing them in appropriate position uh, so that uh, we can rig up the circuit according to a circuit diagram and uh, the power cube block is generally placed at the top yeah so once this is done uh, i'll be rotating So once this is done, I will be uh, rotating uh, the series RLC branch and uh, by pressing Control R, um, and I will be changing it to be a resistor, and uh, its value is chosen to be one ohm. However, if you're using inductor or capacitor, you need to have a proper design procedure. But in order to easily explain how uh, natural commutation takes place, I'm using a resistive value uh, with a value equal to one ohm. So double click on the thyristor and disable the measurement port. We're not using them. We only need a cathode and anode terminals across uh, the circuit, and uh, we will be connecting the pulse generator block across this particular point so we would be changing certain parameters here that is the frequency is to be changed to 50 hertz according to indian standards and uh, the amplitude is chosen to be equal to 230 volt uh, the frequency can be changed based on your requirement if you're using 60 hertz in your country you can do that um, and once that is done uh, i'll be changing the pulse generator block parameters the amplitude is changed to 100 volt because i clearly want to see the pulses that's the only reason um, in case uh, you want to see it much clearly you can increase it or you can decrease it according to your requirement amplitude doesn't matter in this case uh, in simulation especially but in uh, the hardware implementation it definitely matters so the time period is uh, chosen to be equal to 0 0.02 seconds the reason is very simple we are chosen 50 hertz frequency so 1 by 50 hertz will give you time period that is 0 0.02 seconds and uh, the pulse width doesn't matter here i'll be choosing 50 hertz, 50 percent but irrespective of the pulse width the thyristor will be turned off because the anode current becomes equal to zero during negative half cycle of the supply 
as a result the thyristor will be turned off so i will be uh, clicking on ok and i will be connecting a voltage uh, voltmeter across uh, these two points in order to check how the waveform looks like and i'll be connecting the scope as well so in case you would like to see how the pulses are generated and how it is associated with the thyristor to be turned off you can connect that as well um, i will be setting the simulation time to one second because these are static loads uh, so uh, usually for dynamic loads we would require a simulation period of about five seconds but in case of static loads we only need one second so once this is done i guess we have uh, entered all the parameters that are required we can get started off with our simulation by clicking on run all right so double click on this uh, we would be seeing a merged waveform we can separate them uh, by using this and uh, we can separate them into two different categories and uh, we can see them in two different windows over here so we will be zooming a particular portion in order to understand how the waveforms looks like so if you carefully observe uh, during negative half cycle over here uh, it will be initially equal to zero during positive half cycle once a gate supply is given to that thyristor it will become equal to uh, zero volt because it is short circuit it is conducting and once uh, 0 0.01 second takes place half cycle uh, completes uh, irrespective of the pulse pulses it will go into the negative direction and whatever the supply is uh, given it will appear across the thyristor minus vs will be the voltage that is appearing across it again once uh, positive half cycle that is 0 0.02 seconds the thyristor will be conducting and it behaves as short circuit and the voltage will be equal to zero but here if you see i have triggered in such a way that it looks like uh, during negative half cycle there is no pulse and thyristor turns off but if you carefully observe now i'll be changing the pulse width as well uh, you you can change it to five percent so irrespective of the pulse width the the uh, voltage waveform across the thyristor will be the same. If you carefully observe here, again, irrespective of the duration in the pulse width, during negative half cycle 0.01 to 0.02, the voltage is remaining the same. Uh, and uh, irrespective of the pattern in which they are triggered, so it remains the same. So in this way um, you can clearly observe the pulse width doesn't matter with respect to the natural commutation circuit so only important thing is gate supply should be given uh, for the th thyristor to turn on and uh, due to natural commutation the voltage across the thyristor will turn off gradually and automatically it becomes equal to minus vs i hope this uh, video gives you a clear understanding of how natural commutation can be simulated in matlab in case you have any questions please do feel free to reach out to me by typing in your questions in the comment section below in thanks for watching this video please do like it share it and subscribe to uh, our channel for regular updates keep supporting thank you